Hello and welcome to lesson one, new study, new book, uh, new direction this morning as uh, we as I record on this warm Tuesday morning. Uh, A Cry for Freedom is the title of the lesson. It's from Galatians chapter one. We're going to uh, start a new book. I'll give you a bit, little bit of background on Galatians here in a moment. Uh, The main idea is legalism teaches that Jesus plus good works equals salvation. Seems to be a a thought among people. Um, Shared my faith with a guy last week, and I think that he thought that once he became a Christian, he was going to become a monk or something. Um, So it's like, no, um, that's obedience. That's not salvation. Uh, Grace teaches that Jesus plus nothing equals salvation. Uh, The study aim this week is to understand that as a follower of Jesus, you've been set free by the gospel of grace. So let's uh, look at this book, this new book. The theme of the book is Unshackled. Uh, It seems as though a group of of, uh, Judaizers... These are Christians who are trying to teach everyone else that you have to first become a Jew, you have to be circumcised, you have to follow the laws of Moses, all 600 of them, and um, then you have the privilege of becoming a Christian. And Paul's like, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. He had observed that the Lord had given the Holy Spirit to people who had done none of those things and even been circumcised. Nothing. They're pagans. They accepted Jesus and the God, the Lord gave them the Holy Spirit. So if the Lord's willing to give them the Holy Spirit in their current state, then how can we put this yoke on top of them and say, okay, you got to do all these things and then we'll think about it. We'll pray about it. Uh, well, no. And so, um, The background is, a little bit of background, he's writing to a group of churches and he wants this letter circulated. It's not like Corinthians or, you know, Ephesians where he's writing to one church in one place. He knew this letter would be passed around and uh, lots of people would read it. Undoubtedly, there's lots of these same issues in all the churches of the region. Now, uh, Part of dating this thing, uh, if you're thinking of a a region, (laughs) um, Galatia was first a a northern region, and it was a a Celtic uh, place where Celts from Gaul uh, had migrated there, and uh, they called it Galatia. About 25 B.C., the Romans took it over, and um, they also took part of the southern part, region, south. And there were places like Lystra, Derby, Iconium, places where Paul had traveled, and uh, they made it a larger political area, not just ethnic. And uh, they kind of viewed it as a larger region. And so... Uh, we know that Paul traveled in the south of Galatia uh, on his missionary journeys. And so because of that, um, we tend to date it in the uh, 50s, early 50s. Um, he probably wrote it from Antioch of Syria. Uh, you know, lots of different ethnic groups there, lots of different kinds of people there. There were Jews there, there were Greeks there, there were Romans there. Lots of different kinds of people. But he it's the main thing we want you to know is it's it's a letter that he wanted passed around among the churches, places that he had been, and um you know, he's he's dealing with a particular issue. He's like, Why would you want to not live under grace where all you sur- do is surrender to Jesus and let him take care of you? Instead, you're trading that or legalism, where you've got to keep all these rules. And so one thing I want to make plain, too, at the beginning of this study is that uh, he's not saying that there are things that you just ignore. 
uh, that you that you just don't do. You just live and act like whatever. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that those things don't save you. Okay, you 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 do those things in obedience by the leadership of the Spirit within you, not because you want to be saved. He would stand against that, and he would he and he and he did in Galatians, and he was upset about it. Uh, later, he says, "You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you?" It's kind of like, "What are you thinking?" Um, so he stood against legalism. Uh, we need to stand against legalism in the church. Um, you know, it's kind of like <laughs> I had somebody ask me Sunday why I didn't wear a coat and tie. Um, and I said, well, you know, there's lots of ways to honor the Lord. Um, you know, I just I, the Lord looks at the heart. He doesn't look at the outside of a person. Um, not against it. It's just, uh, you know, I think I should wear a tie when I marry someone or bury someone. But uh, I don't quite understand why we, as a, it's a cultural thing, you know. And so, another story, but um, that can tend to be legalistic where you force people to dress a certain way and don't accept them unless they do what you think they should do according to your rules. Uh, the Lord's against that. And Paul pro preach, is preaching against those things and teaching against those things. Well, let's move forward from that. Now you know my feelings on that. Not against it, whatever. But um, let's look here, lesson one. And... Um, Paul, what's so interesting about this passage, it has a customary beginning and um, salutation. And boy, he gets right into it quickly. He's, uh, he deals with what he, the reason for the writing uh, very quickly. It means he has very strong feelings about this. I divided it up, uh, verse 1 and 2, 3 and 3 through 5, and then 6 through 10. And uh, the first part of it is Paul defends his apostleship. Undoubtedly, there were people who believed that he was a fake apostle. Let's read it. Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of, of men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Man, first sentence, he's dealing with something that's on his heart. And all the brethren who are with me to the churches, it's plural, of Galatia. So, um, you know, Paul, this is kind of Paul. You know, Paul has a writing style. He has ways that he does things. And uh, a lot of times he will take things that he has been told that people have said about him, and he'll insert it into his letters. And boy, he does this with the very first verse. You know, if you look at First and Second Corinthians, uh, very common in both of those books because Paul had a difficult relationship with the, the, that church in Corinth, and they would say things about him, and he would know what they said, and he would insert it into the text. He would use their exact words and insert it into his letters just to remind them he knew what they were saying. Uh he says, I'm an apostle not sent from, from men, not self-appointed or appointed by men. I'm appointed by God. You know, I'm not sent by the agency of man just because some group or person sent me, but I'm sent through Jesus. Jesus is the one who has called me to do what I'm doing. And uh, the, the Jesus that was raised from the dead. Uh, and so he's, he says, you know, that Paul, this Paul is sending you uh, this letter. And he says to the churches of Galatia. Then he gets into his uh, normal salutation. He says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age. According to the will of our Father, God and Father, to whom be the glory forever. 
forever. Amen. The thing that I notice the most about Paul's uh, salutations is he always has grace before peace. And the point is you don't have peace without grace. Uh, it's not the other way around. Um, and then he talks about how Jesus, you know, rescued us, uh, forgave us of our sins according to the will of the Father. And so we should glorify him because of that. Then he gets right down to brass tacks. Here we go. Uh, verse 6. I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. He said, I just can't believe that you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> and, um, you know, you are believing a lie and you're following a lie. And it's almost like it's a different gospel. He says, it's not, it's not really another. Um, he says, there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. So he's he is um, confronting a heresy, a false teaching. Uh, verse 8, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we preach to you, he is to be accursed. As we've said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. And so he's saying, you know, you're believing a false teacher. You know, do you remember what I taught you? What I taught you is the truth, and now you're chasing after a lie. And the, the lie is legalism where you've got to do these things to be right with God, to be saved. And Paul's like, no, it's grace, it's unmerited favor. You can never be good enough to be good enough for the Lord. So you just surrender, let him uh, do his work through the blood of Jesus and what Jesus did on the cross. So he's very quick in this letter to confront this false teaching that's going on that they undoubtedly are following, okay? Well, verse 10 or am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Here's another time in these first 10 verses where he is repeating something that they have said to him. Or am I striving to please men? I'm a, he said, am I, am I, do you really believe that I'm a people pleaser? He's like, no. Um, if I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bond servant. Of Jesus. He said, um, if I was really trying to please men, I'd be on a different path with my life. I love that he calls himself here a bond servant. What that is, it is a servant whose master has paid the price. Someone has paid the price for this slave to be free. And so they're free. But because they love the master so much, they voluntarily make themselves a servant. Okay? Isn't that a beautiful picture? It's like, I'm free. And see, that's really the point of the book, is freedom. Um, I've got all this freedom, but because of what he has done for me and for the price that he paid for me to be free, now I love him so much that I'm going to serve him as a servant. That's really the theme of the book to me. And so um, a bond servant, he says, you know, if I, you know, if I was really going to be a people pleaser, believe me, I'd be doing something different with my life. But uh, it's because of what the Lord has done for me. I do what I do. OK, well, let me share with you um, three truths. The first truth is the Lord. He may demand holiness from his children. Uh, yes, there's things that you need to do as a believer, but the Lord is an illegalist. He's not asking us to do things because of salvation. He wants to protect us, and he wants us to be holy. It has nothing to do with earning your right to be in the presence of God and being a believer. Second truth is we can never be good enough to earn our salvation. Uh, good luck with that. None of us. If you sin one time, you're not good enough. Okay. Uh, third point is there's a difference in edification and salvation. 
there's a there's a difference in us being Christ-like and allowing the Spirit to live its you know in our life to be like Jesus in salvation. There's a difference. So, okay, we're starting a new book. It's going to be an interesting book. Let's pray together, and we'll go forward with our week. Uh, Lord, we trust you. We love you. We thank you for everything. I thank you that all we've got to do is surrender to you and let you take care of us. I thank you for grace because we're not good enough. Uh, works can't do it. They're not ever going to be good enough. I thank you that Jesus paid it all and he takes care of us. Lord, bless this study. Bless us this week. In your name that I pray. Amen. Lord bless you. You take care.